And our next speaker is Kevin Kennedy. And Kennedy is going to be talking about overcoming the fear, pandemics, and past lives. And Kevin Kennedy's search for truth began at an early age in his life. After studying books from various theosophical schools, his lifelong search for science of life culminated with the contact of Unarius at age 17. He has given many presentations on the reality of extraterrestrial life and the interdimensional nature of consciousness. Kevin Kennedy. Thank you very much, Mark. It's great to be here. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, perfect. That's always the first question in a Zoom meeting. Can you hear me? Uh, I'm really glad to be here. Uh, we're in San Diego. Uh, it's uh, wonderful that we're able to do this across the uh, United States and have these conversations. But um, before we get any further, I'm going to go ahead and just dive right into what Unarius is a little bit, and then we'll get into the whole purpose of this talk, which is overcoming the fear of the pandemic that has swept across the whole globe. So let me see if I can do this properly. Uh, yes. yes. Perfect. Excellent. Okay. And uh, uh, let's, let's go here. Okay. So um, we're talking about overcoming the fear of pandemics and past lives, understanding the bias of past lives and emotions. And this is being put on by the Unarius Educational Foundation. Uh, the founders of Unarius were Ernest L. and Ruthie Norman. They are the cosmic visionaries, the clairvoyance that brought this uh, understanding of life to planet Earth, this interdimensional understanding of life and of energy and how energy functions. So the, the basic core of the Unarius teaching can be found in this book. It's called The Infinite Concept of Cosmic Creation. It's a series of lectures that the moderator gave, as we call Ernest L. Norman, in 1956 in Los Angeles that was turned into a book. And so this goes into who you are as a soul, uh, why uh, past lives, why future lives, uh, how energy functions, how you are an interdimensional being, and what that all means. That all can be found in this particular volume and is giving the background to what our particular uh, lecture is gonna be about or our quick talk here about pandemics and past lives. Now the whole purpose of, of this particular book is to bring into consciousness the idea that we are all energy beings, that we're all made up of these little tiny bits of information called atoms. But even more importantly than us being energy beings and having atoms is this awareness that atoms themselves are interdimensional in their nature. There is no source of power within the atom. The atom itself is getting that power that is producing the effects of whatever element or, or uh, energy that is that it is showing us through this connection through its infinite vortex this connection to the inner planes of light every one of us is an energy being as has been stated and we receive information through our eyes through our taste through our hearing through touch uh, through t uh, smell all that comes to us through these energy vibrations called sine waves now sine waves move from positive to negative in a 180 degree cycle and that also gives us the direction of how things come from the higher worlds down to the lower negative worlds or the material worlds. So we have this connection, each and every one of us, to the spiritual worlds, this interdimensional connection to our much higher self, or our energy body. Not only do we have an energy body or, or a psychic anatomy, as we term it in Unarius, everything that we go through in this particular life, whether it's you know arguments or loves or things that we do well or things that cause us pain or emotional trauma, we store those energy information uh, vortexes within that higher self or that energy body, that psychic anatomy. And it's not only in this particular lifetime, but it's in many, many past lives. Actually, every one of our past lives, these, these energy information uh, vortexes are stored within that psychic anatomy. So what does that mean to us as a soul? Well, uh, in the inner planes or on these higher worlds where this psychic anatomy lives or resides, uh, that information is in a cyclic pattern or a 360 degree cycle versus the 180 degree uh, sine wave in the third dimension. And that means that everything that we've gone through until we change it, until we have the awareness or uh, the ability to change that energy information is influencing our consciousness, it's influencing our lives, it colors everything that we you know, say, do, think, the way we're motivated about this, this world that we live in is being influenced by the bias of these different past lives. 
So the moderator, as we term him, Ernest L. Norman, made his transition in 1971. And then Uriel, Ruth Norman, began her directorship of Unarius. And she did this uh, by establishing a center in El Cajon, California. El Cajon is a little suburb outside of San Diego. And at this particular, uh, our first center here in San Diego, she began giving classes or having classes in understanding past lives, how past lives influencing us. And the students that came at, at one particular time, uh, at that initial phase of, of Unarius Science, there are 50 to 60 people coming to classes twice a week to begin the whole process of getting the answers for themselves. And this is what Unarius teaches, is that each one of us, through this understanding of how energy functions and understanding the science that Unarius teaches, can get our own answers. So um, she found that the students weren't necessarily um, getting as much help as they could or sharing in areas as much as they could with the world. And she began to have us enact past life cycles in front of the camera. And we did many videos and film films about past lives and understanding your past lives and how they're influencing the now and uh, how these past lives not only happened on this world, but on many other worlds that we were not just uh, indigenous to this particular planet, but we, each one of us have lived many lives on other planets as well throughout this galaxy and many different civilizations, some very negative. So all of these different situations, all these different experiences that have been stored within that psychic anatomy, uh, they are making us who we are today. And uh, all the psychic shocks, the inhibitions, the insecurities that we feel, those are within that energy body that, that has been form, formed by the different past life experiences that every one of us has gone through. So what's the point of all this? Well, as you objectify and change all those different past life emotionalisms, those shocks and blocks that we've all had through these different cycles, these different societies, we are building this higher self, our inner self, our Christ self. And the whole point of that is, is that we want to be open to that higher self. We want to allow that to inspire us, to lead us through this particular life that we're involved with now and into future lives as well. So uh, when we make this transition into spirit and cross through that, that rainbow bridge or through that tunnel of light, we'll be able to arrive on the other side with a real knowledge of what's going on, how to live there, and how to live a much more positive and, and uh, progressive life. So now we're going to get into uh, understanding that you know, these cycles of, of pandemics and plagues and, and different diseases that have uh, raged through humanity on this particular planet, this is not the first one by far. A hundred years ago, there was the Spanish flu. And if you, uh, we talk about in the is that things repeat themselves, that things regenerate from one point in time to another point in time. Uh, and this particular cycle that we're going through now with this pandemic is not uh, something new. If you look back at, at what happened at the time of the Spanish flu, you'll see immediately there's just incredibly close parallels to what's going on now. Uh, in this particular newspaper article that uh, I just picked up off the Google, you can see that uh, you know, they closed down theaters and schools and churches and you know, this wasn't in one time, uh, town or city, but it was you know, all over the United States. They were closing uh, cities and, and, and uh, trying to get that social distancing in place to keep that from that pandemic from uh, spreading at that time, which was the Spanish flu. So, um, it, and then you know, can go back even further than that. Um, this particular one is, you know, gross as it is, <laughs> is, a, is a picture of, of bodies that were piled up at the time of the Black Plague, where they had, uh, you know, mass graves where they threw bodies in, and and because they, you know, didn't want to take the time to try and find out who, you know, was related to whom, or it was so dangerous at that particular time. And I think right now they're even talking about doing that in New York, having temporary graves in, in one of the parks because the bodies, because there's so many bodies piled up. Well, this has happened before. You can see, again, this is very familiar pictures. I mean, they're black and white from 100 years ago, but you could put any one of us in these pictures right now because it's the same thing happening over again. And, and this is the, the purpose of, of understanding that you've lived before is that when you, when you get that awareness into your consciousness that everything that I'm doing right now has a continuity to the past life. Now you can begin to be aware of, well, if I'm fearful, if I'm having insecurity, if I'm having anxiety, if there's, if there's something that's really bothering me, there's a reason for it. It's, it's, it's back there in those past lives. Now, uh, the wonderful part about this study of us as interdimensional beings is the awareness 
that it's not, we're not just all about those past lives. We also have a connection with these inner planes of light. And those beings, those angels on these higher worlds are working with every one of us to help us, help us through this process of overcoming the past life experiences that we've all been through and we're re-experiencing now. And that in this process of aligning ourselves to that higher self, to those inner planes of light, uh, we are not only are um, getting help from them uh, through the inspiration, through creativity, but when we go to sleep at night, we're able to, if we're aware of it, get that help by going through these giant cleansing flames of light that are available to all of us on these inner planes. So um, to finish up a little bit here, just that we are, Unarius, uh, giving classes twice a week still in past lives and understanding your past lives. And you can go to unarius.org and find that out that information. And uh, it will help anyone who really wants to begin to delve into why they're experiencing all this emotion. What, where does it come from? Uh, how is it influencing us? And then once we understand that, what to do about it? So um, that's that little bit about that. I'm going to stop my share and get back to here. So um, what we can understand is that you, you can see that, that, that continuity, that every one of us uh, has lived in these different societies and different civilizations. And for myself, uh, we had a, a contact with the uh, brothers on the inner planes of light about a month ago, and they stated very um, strongly that if you are experiencing that emotion, if you're experiencing that fear, that it has its basis in these past lives where you were involved in these different pandemics or plagues. And for myself, I even you know, was very much aware and saw how I had been involved in, in a city and seeing these bodies pile up. And when I had that awareness, that uh, anxiety and that fear, I could see it began to leave me because I began to be good, become objective with that particular experience and emotion. And this is what it's all about is not allowing uh, the um, experiences that we've gone through before to direct our lives. With this awareness and with this understanding that we are interdimensional beings, that we're connected up with this higher self, the spiritual self, we can become the director of our consciousness, of our thoughts, and we can realize when these things come into our awareness, into our uh, field of view, into our lives, that there's a reason for it. And we can, uh, with that objectification, change the bias of that particular emotion and put it back where it belonged is in the past and become present and, and aware of our positive future. And this is also something that, you know, we're going through this tremendously um, drastic time in our history, but there's a very positive future that's going to come out of all this. Because as, as everyone has seen and, and very much aware of that uh, the materialism that has plagued our world um, and, and kept people so focused on just, you know, collecting uh, cars and riches and houses and uh, thinking that that's where happiness lies uh, has, has shown to be extremely hollow. And that uh, we as souls now, we have an opportunity to not just go through this pandemic and say, gosh, I'm glad that's over, but also an opportunity now to realize, you know, it doesn't have to be that way again. We don't have to you know, engage in the same way that we've been doing, you know, for a thousand years or more, where we're constantly trying to, you know, uh, acquire matter waves unto ourselves, if you want to look at it that way, acquiring something new, acquiring something outside of ourselves, instead of realizing it's our, each and every one of our connection to spirit, to our inner self, is where we're going to find that happiness and that, that peace of mind that everybody wants. So, uh, on the one hand, this is a tremendously negative situation that we are all experiencing and, and all working through. On the other hand, it's a very positive thing because it's forcing us to completely change the, the nature of our lives, the nature we, the way we interact with one another. And uh, for myself, I've seen because of this uh, pandemic, um, there's a lot more humanity that is taking place. People are looking out for each other more. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's an interesting, um, dichotomy, but there you go, is it's forcing us to acknowledge our own spiritual nature and begin to reach back and, and, and fan our humanity. So um, these are all the concepts that Unarius teaches and talks about, and uh, that any one of us, it's, it's not that we want to look for 
somebody outside of ourselves to give us the answers. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to take the principles that are taught, the energy principles that are taught in the books and the lessons, and that connection that takes place because they are channeled from the inner planes, that connection that takes place when we study them, we are then uplifted in mind and consciousness. And then we are able to receive the answers that we need to overcome the battles that we're going through in our lives. So it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity uh, for anyone who wants to take that step forward to begin the process of becoming the um, captain of their own consciousness, the director of their own mind, and recognize that uh, this is not the end, it's just a new beginning, and it's a new cycle. And uh, so I would say to anybody that is experiencing tremendous uh, anxiety or fear, that uh, first and foremost recognize that these angels are working with every one of us, with everyone, and be open to that inner self and take the time, take the opportunity once an hour, you know, once a day, twice a day, three times a day, whatever you can do, just to sit and quiet your mind and open your consciousness and be aware and see these beautiful rings of, of light, of love, of consciousness from the inner planes that these beings are projecting to every one of us. And that when we can do that, when we quiet our minds and, and, and become in a state of gratitude, you'll see that that anxiety and that fear can leave. And also that if you are willing to uh, pick up the study and really get involved with your progressive evolution in a positive and constructive way, that you can um, really make some tremendous headway with yourself and gain the knowledge so that when the next thing comes along, that you're not looking you know, for the answer or for somebody else to tell you what to do, but that you recognize within your own consciousness, here's how I can overcome this particular problem. Here's how I can take the next step forward in my evolution. So um, we are not alone. There's tremendous help given to every one of us, given to this whole planet. And uh, I, there's something else that we should probably talk about here too, is that because people say, well, why, why are we having this pandemic? Why do we have these viruses on this world? And um, these viruses are not an accident whatsoever. They are made up of the negative consciousness of people. And so the virus itself, um, and, and you should look back through history, you'll see it comes in cyclic motion. You know, every hundred years or so, there's a virus that happens. Well, these, these energy, the energy waveforms, the energy thoughts of people form a cloud around planet Earth, around a civilization, around a society. And when uh, it reaches the point of uh, no other way for that particular energy waveform to express itself, it will manifest itself as a virus. And, and that virus, you know, it has its um, lifeline or it's, the reason it lives is, is it is made up of the negative energy, the negative consciousness of the peoples on planet Earth. So while we're experiencing this now, and until we as a humanity grow spiritually, you will see it happen again and again, where these uh, diseases uh, will come back to haunt us until we recognize and begin to live a much more progressive life in harmony with the cosmos, in harmony with the universe. And that's the most important thing that, that any one of us can do is learn how to, instead of fighting so desperately against the cosmos, trying to force it to our will, is learning how to be receptive and open and work in harmony with the cosmos. So uh, that's the, the basic uh, understanding of life that Yanarius teaches. And uh, hopefully, again, if, even if you don't pick up a book that Yanarius has available to, to everyone you can find on our website, uh, just be, a, be, be aware that you are a part of this infinite creative cosmos, that those spiritual guides, the angels, are working with every one of us, they're working with you, they're working with me, and they are just waiting for us to turn our consciousness to our higher self, to our inner self, so that they can provide the inspiration, the love, and the healing that all of us need to overcome these times. And that's what we have. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> For some reason, I'm not hearing anything. Oh, well. I can't hear you, Mark. I still can't hear you, and I don't know why. There you go. No, that was okay. me. Uh, but thank you very much. That was, that was great. So how people can, can people get in touch with you? You can go to our website at unarius, U-N-A-R-I-U-S dot org. 
And uh, at, on that website, you can find our library of, of books uh, that is available. You'll also find videos that we have produced to uh, teach the aspiring soul how to understand themselves uh, as an energy being and, and how to understand where to find out about their past lives, how they can understand themselves uh, throughout these many different civilizations. You'll also find uh, different uh, audio lectures and texts uh, that they can study and listen to. So unarius.org, O-R-G is where you'll find that information. And you'll also find on that particular website information about our ongoing classes on Wednesday and Sunday where you can participate. Right now you can participate via Zoom. Uh, and uh, normally we, we meet at the Unarius Center and have our classes and stream those classes live. But uh, it turns out that you know in San Diego as well as in New York, we're not able to gather right now, but we're handling our classes through Zoom. And that is available to everyone. So uh, that should take care of it. We'll see you at the next expo. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So our last guest this evening is a dear friend of mine also, 